After passing through the compressor, the signal chain splits in two, with half of the signal continuing in the analog domain and the other half passing through a parallel side chain which contains the digital effects. This arrangement ensures that at least 50% of the output is the dry or unaffected part of your signal. The pedal features two separate effects engines, one containing the time-based effects, reverb and delay, and the other, the modulation effects, chorus, flanger and tremolo. Each of them has a large knob with click stops to select the effect and two smaller knobs. In both cases, the level control controls the level of the sidechain signal with respect to the level of the main analog signal path. With the level control fully clockwise, the level of the side chain is equal to that of the main signal. In other words, the output is 50% original and 50% effects. With the level control fully counterclockwise, the side chain is effectively off, meaning that the signal is 100% dry and the effects are not heard. Now, this sounds complicated, but as you'll see in the demo, it's actually quite instinctive to use. Fishman have done a great job when it comes to recombining the main and side chain signals such that the output of the pedal remains fairly consistent no matter what the wet dry blend is. Now, it's important to note that this arrangement means that it's not possible to get more than 50% effect in the output signal. Personally, I think this is an appropriate choice for acoustic instruments as it preserves the naturalness of the sound. So, for example, with reverb, the reverb itself is never louder than the original, which matches how a sound naturally dies away in a real acoustic space. The second knob in each section is a parameter control which differs between the two banks. All right, let's listen to the effects.
I personally find the effects a bit of a mixed bag. I love the reverbs. Both of them are absolutely perfect for adding atmosphere to finger style. Reverb 1 works well behind light to medium strumming as well. The delays I've come to appreciate recently. Delay 2 works especially well to thicken the sound without it losing definition. And the time control allows you to sync the delay time to your song's tempo through trial and error. More on this later. I also really enjoy the two choruses. Once again, they can be used instead of reverb to give a bigger sound. Chorus 2 works especially well as a 12-string emulator. The flanger and tremolo, well... I almost never use them, but as you heard in the demo, they're very beautiful, they're very um, evocative, especially that beautiful tremolo, and I'm sure many of you out there will find a great use for them. Now, a word about how the effects are distributed between the two banks. The fact that the time-based effects are all in bank one means that you cannot have reverb and delay active at the same time, which is apparently a deal breaker for some people playing certain styles of music. Similarly, you can't have chorus and tremolo or chorus and flanger active at the same time. Uh, personally, I've never found this aspect of the pedal to be troublesome. In fact, I never use the banks simultaneously, but you could if you want, for example, have reverb and chorus at the same time. You could also have delay and chorus or delay and tremolo, which would sound pretty crazy. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below if your style of music needs a specific combination of effects that is not allowed by this pedal or if the inability to have more than a 50-50 blend of the dry and wet signals is an issue for you. The final foot switch on this pedal is the boost function, which gives you between 3 and 9 dB of clean boost. This function is located after the compressor section, which in effect means that it acts as additional makeup gain and will not change the amount of compression being applied to your signal. It's also located pre-volume knob, which means that the boost is also present at the XLR output.
Once again, I personally find this feature very usable and it can be used for everything from a small bump in level to a big jump suitable for solos. The only problem, as I mentioned before, is the implementation of the boost level knob. The last stage of the signal chain is the phase control, which in reality is actually a polarity switch. In other words, it inverts the output waveform of the circuit without making any changes in the time domain. This is very useful with acoustic instruments because it allows you to change the relationship of your amplified sound to that being produced by the soundboard of your instrument and can help reduce or even cancel out feedback on stage. Experimentation will yield the best position for this switch. There's no correct setting. As stated in the manual, one position will feel more natural in certain situations. In others, the switch will have no audible impact. The default or non-inverting position is with the switch to the left. For more information on the difference between phase and polarity, please see the article from prosoundweb.com linked in the video description. So, in conclusion, the Fishman Tone Deck is my current preamp pedal of choice for acoustic guitar. As you know, if you've been following my channel, I've been through several acoustic preamp pedals, including a Boss 82, a Boss 83, and a Zoom AC2. I've also used several acoustic amps, such as the Vox AGA70, and most recently, the Blackstar Sonnet 60. All of these have had their pros and cons, but when going direct with no amplifier, I have found the tone deck to provide everything I need and nothing I don't for live use. The effects sound great to my ear and the direct out is extremely quiet. Having said that, here are some things that this pedal does not have that might be important to you in addition to the issues already mentioned. First, a stereo output. This is a mono only pedal. If you really like stereo reverb or ping pong delay, this might not be the pedal for you. I really love the stereo chorus on my old Boss 83, but I was willing to give that up for the additional functionality this pedal provides. Second, this pedal has no semi-parametric mid-range or notch filter. I'm okay with that because several of my guitars have this feature available on their onboard EQ. In fact, with those guitars, I don't actually use the EQ on the pedal, just the low cut filter. And as you can see, even with some guitars that have no onboard EQ, I don't use any EQ at all. Related to this is the fact that there's no way to quickly bypass the EQ, meaning that you can't have, say, a really bright sound set up on the EQ for solos that you then bypass or switch off for normal playing. Third, this pedal has no tap tempo function for the delay, nor does it have a way to precisely set the delay time. I recently played a gig where the delay needed to be synchronized to a sample drum loop, and the only way to do it was by ear using a metronome. I then had to physically mark the knob position on the pedal using a piece of tape. <laughs> Definitely not the most efficient way of doing this. Fourth, this pedal has no tuner or mute functionality. One of the things I appreciated about the Zoom AC2 was the ability to just hit mute and tune silently. This is especially important if you play an instrument with no onboard volume control. Fifth, this pedal has no microphone input and no phantom power, something that is provided by nearly all acoustic amplifiers. Related to this is the fact that this pedal 
has relatively little gain available, right? You've only got 14 dB of gain available on the input trim as opposed to 50 or 60 dB of gain available on mixing consoles. So that's something to bear in mind. This pedal is really not designed to work with microphones. It's designed to work with pickup systems. Finally, this pedal cannot be powered by phantom power, meaning that in practice, you need to use an external power supply with the internal battery as backup. Note that the pedal does not come with a power supply, so that's an additional expense that you may need to figure in. So that's my review of the Fishman Tone Deck. Hope it was helpful to you. If you like my content, please consider subscribing and supporting me on Patreon. Links to my website and social media are in the description section below, as well as the video end cards. Until the next time, this is Bruno Luce saying thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.